Florida has one of the richest biodiversity of reptiles and amphibians anywhere in North America. And it's one of the reasons why I constantly come back down here to Florida to go herping. But I get a lot of messages from people asking me what they can see and where they can see it. So in this video, I'm gonna do one of my favorite things and go herping here in South Florida. And I'm gonna show you guys some of the common reptiles and amphibians that you can see without really having to know a special spot or have really any special herping skills in order to see these really incredible reptiles and amphibians that call Florida home. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. So as soon as you arrive down here in Florida, one of the first reptile species you guys are gonna see is probably gonna be an invasive, like those guys right over there. Those are the brown anoles, and they're invasive to South Florida. They come from the Caribbean and were brought over on plant shipments. And of course, there's always a really good chance of seeing a basilisk lizard down here. Basilisk lizards are almost as common as green iguanas are down here. They are also invasive from Central and South America like the green iguana. But the basilisk and the green iguana are two really common reptiles that will probably be the first reptiles you guys will encounter once you arrive here in South Florida. There's also a ton of other invasive species that you can see, like the curly-tailed lizard. And you you can see these curly tail lizards everywhere in South Florida now. They are invasive, but they've set up camp and they are one of the most common lizards that you are going to see here in South Florida. And this isn't a nature reserve somewhere. I literally am standing at a strip mall in the middle of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. These guys are literally everywhere now, and it is one of the most common lizards that you're gonna see when you come to South Florida. The other common reptile that you guys are going to see without any problems lives in a place just like this the American alligator. Back about 60 years ago, the American alligator was on the brink of extinction, but due to conservation efforts, the American alligator has completely bounced back into the millions. And the beauty of seeing basilisks and iguanas and these anoles and curly-tailed lizards and the native alligators is that you really don't need a specific spot to go to to see them. All you really need to do is find a water source like this and there's going to be alligators in it. All right, look at this right here. This is a gopher tortoise mound and I just saw a gopher tortoise in there. And he is down for the count. We're going to have to come back here. So one of the common reptiles that you can see down here in Florida is actually on the recovery. Gopher tortoises actually used to be exceptionally rare. And years ago, maybe 20 years ago or so, these guys were on the brink of extinction due to habitat destruction. And now when I come down to Florida, it's actually rare that I don't see a gopher tortoise. But gopher tortoises are so important to the ecology here in Florida. They dig burrows and it's estimated that up to 300 other species rely on those gopher tortoise burrows for their security, for cover, for housing. And that includes eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and indigo snakes. They will utilize gopher tortoise burrows as their own homes. So when you see a gopher tortoise mound, Chances are there might be an eastern diamondback or an indigo or other reptile species that aren't too far away. The recovery of the gopher tortoise is evidence that conservation efforts do in fact work. So there's a racer right here and I'm gonna try to get close and see if I can reach in and grab him and show you guys one of the most common snakes that you can see here in Florida. One, two, three. Ooh, got him. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Hi, buddy. All right. Ow, stop biting me. So this is a southern black racer. 
And obviously, this is the racer that you're gonna find all over Florida, from the Keys all the way up to the Georgia border. And the Northern Black Racer, obviously, is found in the northern part of the United States. But this is one of the most common snakes that you're gonna see when you come herping in Florida. These guys are everywhere. This is the fifth or sixth one that I've seen so far. This is the first one that I've been able to catch. And the reason is, is because it's right after a rainstorm, temperature's a little cold. If it was bright and sunny, there's no way I would have been able to get this guy. These guys are really awesome little snakes. He's bitten me a few times, but man, a big shaved ape jumps on me, I'm gonna bite him too. But these guys eat a wide variety of foods. These guys will eat frogs and rodents and lizards. They don't just specialize in one particular kind of prey item. All right, buddy, go back to Florida, go be a racer. All right, one more bite, that's fine. I, I, I deserve that. <laughs> See you later, buddy. So when you come herping in Florida, don't just go to natural areas to find herps. Find yourself a really creepy old abandoned building like this. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely been some satanic murder worship something going on in there. That is no doubt haunted. These buildings are reptile magnets. You'll find lizards here, you'll find snakes here, and there are usually a lot of boards and a lot of things to flip around abandoned buildings like this. Oh, look at all these boards. Man, this is the kind of stuff that makes my heart go boom, boom, boom. Let's flip. Nothing. 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 <laughs> All right, so lifting that big board over there paid dividends. Look at this big chunky dude. This is one of Florida's invasive toads. This is a marine toad, or also called a cane toad. These are from South America, and these are now invasive pretty much all over the world. These are the guys that are really causing a lot of problems in Australia, but it is one of the common toads that you can find here in Florida, invasive or not. He has already peed all over me, which was very friendly of him, but he is a big, chunky marine toad. And man, lifting up that big board just to find this big, chunky marine toad, well, I was kind of looking for a rat snake, but well, I'll take this guy. That's cool. Holy crap, look, 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 look. Adamantius. That is an eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Look at that beautiful thing. I don't have any sticks with me, so I'm gonna try to get around him. I have nothing to handle this guy with, but it just rained, and that is when these guys come out in force. Look at that beautiful snake. I'm gonna see if I can get him to just kind of stay put so that I can film him here. But man, is he beautiful. And he's very, very aware of my presence. You can hear him rattling. But again, I have no snake hooks. I have no snake clamps. And I don't like herping with that kind of equipment, even though you can come across a beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake like this. Look at how black that mask is. Oh man, is he beautiful. I'm gonna get around this side again and just try to corral him in here so that he doesn't run. But look at that, big, perfect rattle. Nice, he's getting a little agitated. And he's gonna start to run a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda stay in front of him and just kinda corral him here. So this is not one of the common snakes that you're gonna see. As a matter of fact, this is only the second one I have ever seen down here. But, man, you come out here on a day like this, hey, where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? This isn't one of the common snakes you're gonna see if you come down to Florida, but you have a really good chance at coming across one of these beauties. Oh, man, is that awesome. It's all right, sweetheart. It's all right. What a perfect snake. Not a blemish on him. Big, perfect rattle. This is the largest species of rattlesnake on the planet. And again, it's only my second one I've ever seen. This is absolutely awesome. 
This is an amazing snake. I'm just gonna kind of stay in front of him and corral him. Here he comes right towards me. He's very aware of my presence, but he's not sure what to make of me. But man, is that beautiful. All right, I'm just gonna walk with you, buddy. Right back under that palmetto. Or you can stay and hang out with me more if you want to. That's fine with me. Man, is that gorgeous. What a find. And here comes Devin. So it. it's right here in the palmettos. Oh my God. I just filmed him for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yes. How awesome is that? That's only my sixth one. Your sixth ever. one? That's my second one. Oh man, this is the beauty of herping in Florida. Right in the middle of a thunderstorm. Yep. So now, where we are, we are surrounded by the middle of a city yeah. here in Southeast Florida. Yeah. Th these diamondbacks are stuck in this pocket. They are trapped. There is nothing but development everywhere. So to find one still hanging on in this habitat is astounding. And like I said earlier, we don't have hooks. We don't have tongs with us. I do not like herping with that kind of equipment because it draws attention to you. And the kind of interaction I like having with these snakes is to just sit here and admire them in their natural state without bothering them, without feeling like I need to increase my manhood somehow by trying to handle them. Just to sit here and admire that we're sharing the same space at the same time. That is how I love encountering these guys in the wild. So one of the best ways to see a lot of really cool herps down here in Florida is to road cruise at night. Chances are those snakes are either gonna be crossing these roads or they're just gonna be sitting on it absorbing that heat. Hopefully we're gonna see a lot of really cool snakes crossing this road. All right, look at this little guy right here. Pretty one. Oh yeah. So this is a little baby Florida water snake. That's obviously this year's baby. Yeah. Come. Honestly. Not very old at all. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Probably come only come a month or two old at most. Yeah, he is like fresh born. Where are you? Come here. Look at this little snake. He is really pretty. This snake is maybe a few days, if not a week old. Yeah. Man, these guys are just amazing looking as babies. And one of the problems that this guy is going to have to face right now is that he needs to find a meal fast. He needs to find small fish or small frogs. And in this area of Florida, there's a native tree frog that's really small. It's called a squirrel tree frog. The problem is, is that the invasive Cuban tree frogs are eating all of these smaller native frogs and decimating their population. And it's those frogs that these little neonate snakes rely on for their first meal. They used to be really common, but now they're becoming more and more rare because they're being gobbled up again by that invasive Cuban tree frogs. But this is one of a handful of water snakes that you can find out here in Florida. Another snake, what do we got? Oh, yes. hello, this is what I was hoping to honey. See that is the world's smallest rattlesnake. That is a pygmy rattlesnake. This that is, the, is fantastic. This is the first time I've ever found a, the world's largest and the world's smallest rattlesnake in the same day. That is Ooh. fantastic. Look at that. He's doing that little head twitch thing. And look at the way that they rattle. They just kind of jerk their tail. They don't do a constant buzz. But as far as common reptiles are concerned, the pygmy rattlesnake is actually quite a common snake that you're gonna encounter down here in Florida. So unlike the Eastern Diamondbacks that we were finding, which are in the genus Crotalus, these are actually in the genus Cisturus. And in that genus, you have these guys, the pygmies, and you also have the Massasaugas further up north and further out west. All right, so Devin, you were saying that when you usually see one pygmy, you, you see a lot, see a lot yeah. and there's a reason for that. Yeah, they're really dense where they can be found. When they find the right environment that they like, they're really dense, but they don't do well outside of those perfect habitats for them. So they are common if you find the right spot. Exactly, and obviously we just found the right spot. Absolutely. All right, 
Let's get back in the car and see what else we can find out here. So guys, if road cruising isn't as productive as you'd like it to be, keep note of those weird, abandoned, haunted places that you saw earlier in the day and come back to them at night with a flashlight because you can see some really cool snakes just out on the move around these creepy, haunted, satanic, creepy places. Anybody staring at us in there at all? So creepy. So unsettling. Is anybody peeking at us from in there at all? Anybody looking at us in a very sinister way? Okay, moving on. There's no way this place isn't haunted. This is no doubt somebody's tomb. And look, the tomb is open. <laughs> All right, Devin got the nice garter. So usually these garters, these are Eastern garters, and usually they can be really, really blue here in Florida. This one really isn't. I mean, he has a little bit of blue on him. This one was just out on the curl. That's fantastic. All right, well, snakes are out, and that's why it always pays to come back to the creepy damn buildings. All right. That's a nice looking garter. Well, another common snake that you can encounter here in Florida. Absolutely. One of my favorites. All right, let's let him go back and keep on exploring this haunted satanic building. <laughs> okay. Look at that little gecko. He's got himself a cockroach. <laughs> oh, look, there's a sleeping anole right there. Well, was a sleeping anole. Oh, man, this place is creepy as hell. Cockroaches crawling up the wall there. Okay. Let me go back up this way. Let me go back this way. Dude, what the hell was that? Okay. All right. I have no clue what that was, but that was definitely came from inside the building. Um. Yeah. All right. I don't. I don't know what that was, but that definitely came from inside this building. This is some crazy haunted stuff. But uh, I don't know, we're getting back in the car because this place is freaking me out. Well guys, it's getting late and I've got an early flight home tomorrow. Today was an epic day herping in Florida. You know, if you've ever dreamt of coming down here to go herping in Florida, which I think everybody should, I hope this video gave you guys some insight into some of the common reptiles and amphibians that you can encounter down here. What wasn't common was actually finding the world's smallest rattlesnake species and the world's largest rattlesnake species in one day. I have never done that down here before and that was epic. And also what wasn't common was that clear and undeniable poltergeist activity at that building back there. And on that note, I'd like to give a real quick shout out and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Thank you for your continued support. If you would like to become a Patreon member, get Rattle On swag and a bunch of other perks, that link is in the description below. So anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.